like the T120, it's got a new 1200cc liquid-cooled parallel twin engine, but with a very distinct feel thanks to a range of differences including high compression cylinders and a larger air box. It's the high-power version to the T120's high torque. Service intervals for both are 10,000 miles, up from 6, it might be the high-power version but no one has told that to the torque it makes in the low to mid range. In fourth, at about 3,500 revolutions per minute, which is about 50 miles per hour, rolling on the throttle brings decisive acceleration, accompanied by a good, loud bark from the exhaust. I kept blipping the throttle whenever I slowed down and pulled in the clutch, just to hear it again, without competition from wind noise. And it's only just getting started, with peak power just a hair's breadth from the 7,000 revolutions per minute redline. That peak is 97 horsepower at 6,750 revolutions per minute, so it's not outrageously powerful by modern standards, but it's a bike that makes achieving a good pace easy. Unlike the T120, which is possibly best enjoyed at an unstressed and torquey 5,000 revolutions per minute, the Thruxton R goads you to spend more time around that peak. And when you're not, it's still fast. Frequent gear changes are light on the wrist thanks to a torque assist clutch. The tubular steel cradle mainframe is new, and the same as the T120s, but with a different subframe welded on. The headstock angle is steeper and the trail and wheelbase shorter than the outgoing model apostrophe S. Triumph seemed to be one of the few manufacturers to still quote dry weight figures. At 203 kg, the Thruxton R doesn't look especially lightweight on paper despite the tactic, but the ease with which it turns makes the figure seem an irrelevance. The front end feels stable, easily directed and confidence-inspiring, with a good sense of connection to the tire through the low bars, 